Hello once again YouTube and welcome to another video of yours truly Robert Lewis from the Knights of Awesomeness and today we're gonna take a look at Doctor Who and the Happiness Patrol Yes, Doctor Who and the Happiness Patrol <coughs> Well, it's not cool that, yeah the, the Happiness Patrol, yeah. It, it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's uh, it it's from one of my my favourite Doctor Sylvester McCoy. It, it is who, yeah. His first story was pretty awful and garbage. But it gradually got better. His first season was meh. His second season was hell yeah it is. But third season is nice. Yeah. <sighs> yes. And this is the the second story in his third season. And the happiness. Yeah. And let me tell you the synopsis. Basically, it, it's basically Doctor Who does Margaret Thatcher, basically. Everybody is on the planet Terra Alpha, bright fluorescent lights and garish candy striped colours abound. The population consistently display happy smiles. There is no sadness on Terra Alpha. No, no sadness to be seen on Terra Alpha. Anyone feeling remotely glum disappears quickly. Mm. <laughs> Having heard disturbing rumours, the Doctor and Ace re re arrive to topple the entire regime overnight. But they have, but they haven't reckoned upon the varied, <laughs> punctible measures enforced by the colony's leader, Helen A. Uh, yeah, Helen A. Mm, striking resemblance to a certain female prime minister from the. <laughs> From the 80s. Mm, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> but there are many delicious ways to vanish on Terra Alpha. You can be <laughs> hunted down by the, your present happiness patrol. <laughs> That's where the title of the story comes from. Or ruled by Helena's ravenous. Dog, fifth, fifth, but an un, uh, especially unlucky few will find themselves in the sweetie factory, manned by Helena's psychotic henchman, the Candy Man. This time, happiness will prevail. Yeah, uh, this is this is one of. This is one of those stories, this is a political story where they, where Doctor Who takes a jab at, at, uh, the government will do something like that. The story is written by a great, 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 Curry, I'm sorry if I butchered his name, and in my opinion, this is this is uh, alongside all the others from season twenty-five, the one of the best not two stories ever. Probably in my top twenty. Yeah. The the usual gap. The the usual the regular the series regulars Ace is played by Sophie Aldred and the seventh. Doctor is played by Sylvester McCoy on form legit. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I doing this with my life? Oh! 
The Dalek returned. This is not your story, Dalek. I think he's sad. No, no, no. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also the guest cast is pretty good, especially with the Candyman. He's very quick tempered, and his and his um, uh, his helper, his right hand man, is. <laughs> Is not really nice to a candy man. Uh, is, is, gets fed up with the candy man, and so does the candy man. He gets frustrated and it sounds like this all the time. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, uh, yeah. Halliday is basically Margaret Thatcher because. If you were living in the UK in the 80s, or you uh, have the knowledge of people living in the UK in the 80s, there was this there was this woman named Margaret Thatcher. Uh, yeah, and she was Prime Minister for of the UK for about six, eight, seven years. Somebody like that, and she wasn't a very nice person because uh, uh, because she did stuff I can't remember. Did she enforce things and she was being made and everybody got angry and made protest stuff and oh my lord, <laughs> oh yes, and also. It also affected Doctor Who before this story in 1984 with Warriors of the Deep, and because of because of her strikes, uh, they can fell the the set the the budget was cut in half, and that's probably why that story turned out the way it did. It was absolute crap. Trust me. Oh, yeah. I might be doing a review of it because I I'm only. Do Why do I only look at the good parts of Doctor Who? I should look at the bad parts of Doctor Who, shouldn't I? Do you agree? Yeah, he agrees with me. <laughs> What am I doing with my life? <laughs> yes, the, the, this story is amazing, and the acting's brilliant. I don't know what else to say. It's it's a pretty good story. <laughs> um. Mm. And the practical, and it's all practical effects they use for stuff. And the way that the Candyman executes people is pretty. Basically, they get slimed by green, by by pink slime. Uh, it comes down on you, and it, ooh, it's acid, I think. Is put, uh, pink slime would, would be harmless, but it's probably acid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's acid. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, and and uh, I I don't know what else to say. Uh, honestly, it's a good story. You should go and buy it. It comes in the Ace Tales box set, which also comes with Dragonfire. Unfortunately, I got this second hand, which means that I uh, don't have Dragonfire. That was uh, Dragonfire was an okay story. It had a weak 
cliffhanger because it was literally a cliffhanger. <laughs> oh Christ. Yeah. And and that means I had it and I went to the second hand shop that I got this from. And all the Doctor Who DVDs are gone! Great, that means I have to get another... I have to get the full box set, which also includes this. So, I don't know what to do... So, I wouldn't know what to do with this copy. So, on eBay, probably not worth that much. Uh, uh, do a cup with the... Yeah, it's a great story. Writing is on point. The performances... Nailed, are, are nailed to the wall. Unfortunately, Doctor Who wasn't getting much press in the McCoy era. Um, that's what led it to its inevitable demise at the hands of Michael Grade and the BBC. Yes, so I'll see you next time, we'll see you in the next classic review where I'm reviewing Talons of Wayne Giant. So I'll see you then. Bye.